Hi everyone, so welcome to my YouTube channel. So this video is about NEET Karnataka CET 2021 where I am trying to solve some chapter wise questions in the chemistry subject. Okay, if you have uh, gone through my previous video where I have uh, in the last year I have solved some questions from the question paper like a previous year questions of a particular topic those videos you can uh, find in my playlist okay please go and visit that one so here i thought of doing some uh, like a questions based on a level so here i have taken as a level one where a very simple questions where no need to spend much time for this one okay and along with that one i'll try to give some trick to remember some answers or some a uh, concept over here okay so the first topic here is solid state okay the questions were from a different book as well as from the chemistry exemplar so you had to concentrate on the exemplar where most of the questions will appear from that part also okay so here i have taken around six to seven questions it is like a level one like you can answer in an easy way okay no need to work out and uh, nothing for the eleven one like they were uh, like a simple questions right yes so the topic as i told is about the solid state that that is a second pu the uh, first topic so the first question see uh, like before going to the question it is compulsory that you should know the concept see without knowing the concept you can't solve any questions also it's a very a simple question you need to know the concept thoroughly so that you can answer properly okay yes so the first question is which of the following is an amorphous solid so we have gone through the theory like when it comes to a type of solids it is like a, a crystalline and the amorphous solids they will going to have a, a different properties okay so and you should know the example of both so here they are asking you the question give an example for the amorphous solid so dear students amorphous solids are nothing but a pseudo solid so how you can like uh, differentiate means in case of a amorphous solids there is a random arrangement of a constituent particles okay where the particles are not arranged in a regular manner like how it's been arranged in a crystalline solids so when it comes to amorphous solids a uh, random arrangement means we're not going to get a definite shape over the okay so among the four options that they have given we need to mention which is the amorphous salt so the first one is like a graphite dear students we know that graphite and the diamond the main constituent of both is a carbon where we will going to have a regular arrangement and the definite shape over here so it's an example for the crystalline solid come to the next one quartz glass okay so quartz glass is nothing but silicon dioxide or we can call it as a silica actually here we'll not going to get a regular arrangement okay so glass is called a super cooled liquid which is a best example for the amorphous solid okay and when it comes to chrome alum so uh, it's like a chromium alum we can say okay it will be used in the leather in the leather industry okay it's also an example for the crystalline solid and the silicon carbide is an example for the crystalline under crystalline it is an example for the network solid dear students okay so obviously option b is the one which is an amorphous solid so along with that one you should know some other example for the amorphous solid see when it comes to a crystalline solids almost the inorganic salts like a, a sodium chloride cesium chloride calcium fluoride uh, like like uh, those are nothing but like a, a regular arrangement will be there and they are example for the um, crystalline but when it comes to amorphous you have to remember some examples like rubber okay and plastic and polymer so when i say rubber and plastic they'll come under polymer itself and there's some example like a, a fused silica okay and then some example like a wax you can give example which is an amorphous and glass as i told is an uh, super cooled liquid okay and gels okay and plastic rubber and glass polymer fused silica okay so tar 
okay so tar these are all are example for the amorphous salt so dear students along with this one you have to remember all this they may ask the question in any way so this is the first question i hope you find this one useful now let us move to the next one that is amorphous solids are okay so they have given properties and we should know the properties of both crystalline and amorphous then only we can solve the question see amorphous solids are uh, like they possess sharp melting point option b different physical properties super cool liquid and crystal symmetry see crystalline solids since they have a, a, a regular arrangement of a constituent particles the regular arrangement of a constituent particles will leads to their sharp melting point okay and they have a different physical properties and they have a, a, a symmetry in their crystal structure but amorphous solids don't have the sharp melting point okay and they're not going to form a definite crystal symmetry and even they'll go into like a properties will be like a different but amorphous solids are called as a super cooled liquid even they are known as what they are known as pseudo solids okay they are known as pseudo solids so amorphous solids are called as a super cooled liquid okay so the answer for the second question is option c come to the third question graphite is a good conductor of electricity due to the presence of so graphite is nothing but a carbon okay so where in case of a graphite the carbon will be having a sp2 hybridization dear students okay if sp2 hybridization it is going there will be one valency electron left from each carbon which is responsible for the conduction where such a, a valency electron is not available in case of a diamond okay because diamond will be having a sp3 hybridization so that's why diamond is a not a conductor whereas graphite is a good conductor so why graphite is a good conductor due to the presence of a valency electrons okay so the answer for this one is valency electron and i have discussed on another point that the hybridization here is sp2 hybridization okay i hope it is clear now let us move to the next question that is which of the following yes which of the following is an amorphous solids see in the beginning only i told you people inorganic salts whatever will come through will be a crystalline solid so other than that here we have a sodium chloride we have a calcium fluoride and we have a glass and we have cesium chloride so dear students as already given an example for the amorphous solids okay glass is an example for the amorphous solid okay so the next question is which of the following is a network solids yes dear students when we classify the crystalline solids based on the constituent particles okay constituent particles means what so there is a regular arrangement in case of a crystalline solids right so the regular arrangement of a atoms might be there or ions might be there or molecules might be there okay so based on which constituent particles are present the crystalline solids been classified into ionic metallic molecular solids or network solids okay network solids are also known as what covalent solids so dear students covalent solids or the network solids both are one and the same so best example for the network solids is diamond okay it's like a cage like structure or it is like a network like structure where the constituent particles are the atoms which are bonded together by the covalent bond where in case of a network solid so when i say diamond carbon will be present and the carbon carbon will be in a covalent bond so option c is the right one then what about sulfur dioxide so sulfur dioxide as we all know it's a molecule so it's an example for the molecular solids but iodine is also a molecule and it's an example for the molecular solids water or we're going to call it as a ice is also an example for the molecular solid okay so the answer for the fifth question is diamond now the next question is an atom at the corner of a unit cell makes 
dash contribution to a particular unit cell. So if you know the types of a unit cell like a simple unit cell, body centered cubic unit cell and the face centered cubic unit cell. Okay, in all the three types of a unit cell, eight atoms will be present at the eight corners. So I'm going to write here. So this is what the cube. Okay, eight atoms will be present at the eight corners of a cube. Okay, where each atom will contribute how much to a particular unit cell dear students it is 1 by 8 okay means out of like what we can say if we take a one atom if i divide that into a eight part only one part among that eight part belongs to a one unit cell okay so the contribution of a corner atoms is 1 by 8 so the next question which of the following is not the characteristics of a ionic solids? So, under a type of crystalline solids, ionic solids is also the one. So, characteristics of a ionic solids means the constraint particles are the ions. When we say ions, they are the good conductor of heat and electricity. They are brittle in nature. They are shiny in nature. Okay. And they are good conductor of heat that I told. Okay. And these are like a basic character. Okay. And here and they have a sharp melting point and the boiling point. Okay. And they have a strong force of attraction. Okay. They are anisotropic means they are crystalline solids. So among the four character that they have given, which is not the characteristics of ionic solids they are asking. So dear students, as I told, they are brittle in nature. They have very strong force of interaction because positive and the negative ions will be there. Obviously, the strong force will be there. And they are anisotropic in nature. Yes, anisotropic property is a property of a crystalline solid. So, ionic solids comes under crystalline means obviously this will be the property of ionic solids also. But the first option, a very low value of electrical conductivity in the molten state. No, actually ionic solids which are present in the molten condition, they are the good conductor of heat and electricity dear students because we are going to have a free ions over there. And ions, more the ions, okay, more uh, if it is in a molten state, more will be the mobility and more will be the conduction. So, option A is not the uh, characteristics of a ionic solids. Okay, so these are the uh, some uh, uh, very simple questions based on a uh, properties or the characteristics of a uh, uh, solids. Okay, I hope you find this one useful. So in the next video, let us discuss about some more questions of a uh, level 2 where you need to uh, work a little bit more to uh, uh, get the answer. Okay, I hope you find this one useful. Okay, just wait for my next video. Thank you so much.